Good morning, everyone. <laughs> Good morning. I'm so glad that you joined us for breakfast. And uh, Dan, you know, this is probably one of the biggest questions that um, I get, and I think that you get as well, about what to eat that's you know, you were like, you're starting a plant-based nutrition plan. You know, you're trying to get off to a good start. And my first question with everybody is, well, what are you going to have for breakfast? It's a great place to start <laughs> because as we wake up, we've been fasting all night. We want to break that fast. And there's a lot of evidence out there that says that when you eat breakfast, not only does it enhance or start up your metabolic process mm. and get your body awakened and alive and fueled for the day, but it also shows that you lose weight when you eat breakfast, that you also turn on all of your metabolic processes to even burn some of your stored energies like that, so you'll lose some weight. I'm in, I'm in. <laughs> um, but and simplify it. How many times do people say, what are you having for breakfast? What should I have for breakfast? Mm. Well, I know that most of us have been with the standard American diet, and the standard American diet mm -hmm. are always processed carbohydrates. I've always said there's no such thing as breakfast food. Mm -hmm. That's right. Food is food. Yeah. There's no breakfast food. Eat leftovers. Eat. You know, have a salad, have a stir fry, have a sweet potato with salsa and some beans and a dollop of guacamole. That I mean, would be so much better than a donut or a bagel <laughs> or or you know all the things that people think. They need to have for breakfast. How about breakfast cereal? That's right. I mean, how about those uh, multicolored little loops that they sell and they call them fruit? <laughs> I mean, there's no fruit in those. So I'm just, you know, so upset with all people trying to figure out what's for breakfast and they're mm. trying to put these breakfast foods in. It's not about that. It's really about eating food. So we're going to show you what we eat five to six days a week for breakfast. And I mean, the sun rises and sets on these breakfasts. I don't want to have to think about what I'm going to have at the start of the day. I have too much on my mind. I have too many other decisions to make. It's the last decision I want to make. But I want to make sure that I'm eating something that's nutritionally dense. Yes. That's going to be delicious. Just, I'm yes. going to love. I'm going to look forward to eating first thing in the morning. Yes. And I actually don't eat first thing in the morning. No. You do, but I don't. Right, so when, whenever you get up, whenever you're ready to eat, I never say that you have to eat first thing in the morning. Mm -hmm. I work out before I eat my breakfast, mm -hmm. so it's quite a bit of time before my breakfast gets into my body. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but it's earlier in the day than mine, you know, yeah. because I like to work out later in the day. So I like to, you know, I work from home, so I usually get right at it when I, you know, I do my my daily morning rituals and uh, my meditation, my prayer, and my stretching, and then um, I get into my work, and then mm -hmm. about mid-morning is when I eat breakfast. Mm -hmm. But I never skip breakfast. Mm -hmm. I never skip it. That's a good idea. Yes, and I always look forward to it, and it keeps me satiated just until lunch, which is great. Um, so yeah, I yeah. also wanted to say that when you're putting together, like, what can I have for breakfast, keep it simple. Mm -hmm. you know, like Pamela said, we eat the same thing probably about 340 days out of the sure. year, yeah. maybe 335, but it's a lot of days <laughs> that we eat the same thing. So one or two or three things, you, when you think about our three, four, five meal plan, three breakfast, just keep it simple. Keep it to three, you'll feel a lot better about deciding on what you're going to have. And I know that when we made poor choices for breakfast, um, they they were typically the same poor choices, right. <laughs> you know? Like you'd have the bagel, which would be the go-to, or you'd grab, I'd, you, know, um, you know, if I was out with the kids and I was driving them to school on the way home, I may pick up a muffin. I mean, right. this is what a this pastry, was, a donut, this is the real deal. I mean, that's what roll, I used to do. Exactly. Or even breakfast cereal, processed food. You know, or a breakfast sandwich out. Mm. Oh my gosh, a breakfast sandwich out in the world. Fat, salt, and sugar. Very difficult to get a healthy <laughs> one that's nutritionally that's dense. Right. That's so, right. So, just to get right at it, um, and by the way, we drink coffee. I like to drink mine out of a black dog mug. <laughs> Dan's got his. We're both down in the vineyard this weekend. I like to have a weekend mug and feel like I'm on vacation. Anyway, we drink it black, okay? It's Just to let mindset. you know. Um, <laughs> but what I like to do is uh, I have an acai bowl. And 
if you want to grab those, Dan. I, this is just like a, kind of a recent discovery of mine. I'd say, you know, within maybe the last year. Uh, and you may see, have seen like acai bowls when you go to like a, a cafe or really like... Or sometimes in the mall. Yeah, sometimes. That's right. And I said, you know what? I am absolutely sure those acai balls, bowls, balls, balls. bowls are loaded with, with like things that I probably don't want. For example, I don't want peanut butter or almond butter that has added anything in it. Right. Added anything in it, okay? Maybe a Saturated little salt. Fats, I don't right. I don't want any processed add, food. Right. No, no added sugar. sugar. Nothing like that, okay? Um, so I, I want to have it as low sugar as I can. And I want to add what I want. I want my add-ins in so that I can c control what it is that goes in there. Right. So I found these, these packets, and they're actually now more readily available in any, really any grocery store. Mm. So you can get them in this variety, which is the dragon fruit, and they're packets like this. The or same you can thing get with the acai. The, the acai super fruit packs. And there's even other varieties that you can get. But this is a brand that we just that we found. And again, it's um it's you know, this is another brand, and it, they're pretty readily available. Very high in antioxidants, both these fruits yeah. from South America. Uh, and very tasty. Mm -hmm. uh, almost like a blueberry taste, a kind of yeah. sweet, bitter kind of taste. But you can control because if you want. Um, and you'll see what I add into mine, but you could add a handful of any leafy greens that you want. Look at, there's no recipe, so don't ask me for a recipe on this. It's what you like, right, okay? It's right. what you discover, it's what you have as an idea. And experiment, be that experiment of one. That's how I figured out what it is that I'm gonna do day in and day out to just, you know, um, get my nutrition and enjoy it. I love to eat, and <laughs> I love delicious food. That's what so, we always say. No one likes to eat more than Pamela and I, <laughs> but we just like to eat good food, exactly. real food, whole food. I love to. I like. I love the food that loves me back. That's right. All right. So I'm just going to take this, and I'm going to put this down a little bit so you guys can see what we're doing. I'm doing here, mm -hmm. and um, I am going. You simply just have. A food processor. That's we right. use a Ninja uh, as our food processor in our house, and I'm Pamela just squeezes the bag I will into the Ninja. Yeah, I will tell you those other ones, the um, the Asai Super Fruit. They're a little um, more frozen, and so I usually will take a little time to let it defrost. Um, but this is the Dragon Fruit is softer, so I do that. Then I just put my um, frozen berries. I do some frozen berries. You can do fresh. I like this to be on the thicker side. You can make this actually into a smoothie to go. So all you have to do is add a little bit more liquid. And you know what you can get? It's what? just um, the almond milk or some oh. whatever milk you have. And guys, I'm not a measurer, okay? Don't ask me to measure anything. But you know what? I put a little in. <laughs> and what's a little to me might not be a little to you. But that's okay. I do the same thing. We're gonna put about a quarter cup of liquid. So I put really almost like a, like maybe a tablespoon or two of almond milk. And then Dan, I'm just gonna get a little bit of water if you just get me a cup of water. I'm always looking for ways to cut down on additional fat. I don't do well, fat loves me. It loves to stick to me. Um, I have discovered that. And so I, I try to find ways that I can reduce the fat, but don't eliminate the fat. We need fat. We need fat, okay? And fat makes things delicious, okay? This was a big drink of water, but this is just, let's just put a little bit in here, okay? So now what I'm going to do is we keep all of our nuts and seeds in these containers, and then we just put them on a tray in our cabinet, and then we just take the tray out, and then we have them all ready to go. All right? And what I like about keeping them like this is you don't keep them in the bags they come in because it's hard to keep opening and closing the bags. It's so much easier to use them in these containers. The other thing I like too is to keep them separate. Don't make a combination of these nuts and seeds because then the big ones come to the top and the little ones fall to the bottom as you keep using them. And yep. that's when, is that what you want? I was looking for the teaspoon. And that's where um, the 
uh, you get the big ones on the top and it just doesn't stay blended properly. This way you measure it out with each one that you make and it's a lot easier. So I have some hemp seeds, okay? I'm just gonna put a teaspoon of this in. I have some ground flaxseed. I have- These are all so delicious, some so good for you. Chia seeds, I'm gonna put a little bit. The chia seeds will make this um, a little bit plumper. Thicker. So it's thicker, yeah, which is really great, okay? That's um, what I usually put in our overnight oats. Okay, so I'm putting, you saw I put flax, hemp, chia. All right, that's what I'm doing. And then I've got that and I have my milk and I need, look at, I'm putting in a banana. I'm only putting in a half. My daughter Leah, she puts a half a banana in her oat bowl every morning. She makes her oat bowl and she leaves a half a banana for me and that's what I put in my acai bowl, okay? Again, I could put a whole banana, that's fine, but you know, I'm looking for a way. Bananas are, you know, kind of high glycemic. High you know, glycemic, they, have, they do have know, a lot of sugar, but a so, lot of fiber. Great form of uh, soluble fiber, so that, um, you know, it really keeps your blood sugars low. So people are always afraid of the sugar that's in food, but it's not really the sugar that's in the food whoops. in the form that it comes in, it's how your body processes processes that sugar and absorbs that sugar. And when you're eating food in its whole form, especially fruits, it'll be absorbed a lot slower. Okay, so I'm just gonna mix this all up in our, you know, our ninja here. That is such a great sound. Look at how beautiful that is, okay? Mm. And again, you can control the thickness of it, adding a little bit more chia. The, if you do add a whole banana, that makes it a little bit thicker as well. You can see I didn't mix that banana up. There it comes, a little bit of the banana. That's, all right. <laughs> That's okay, it's nice and thick. And again, if you wanted to take this to go, you simply would make it um, a little bit thinner and make it a smoothie, and then, okay, this is, this is my favorite part coming up. That looks so good, Pamela. The color oh, is gorgeous. It's beautiful. Then what I do is I take pumpkin seeds and I sprinkle those in, a little bit of pumpkin seeds. A little artistic flair here. I do the cacao nibs. Great antioxidants, great flavor, Again, a little bittersweet. You could, you could mix this all in. I mean, I just do it this way just because it looks so beautiful and I like to make it look nice and give myself a treat every morning. And then I use almond butter, okay? You know, the nut butters are great. Just make sure you read the ingredients so that there are no hydrogenated fats like palm oil, uh, saturated fats that your body just doesn't need and you have plenty in there and um, you don't want any added sugar either so look at the ingredients I like this brand I found this brand online from New York and all it is is almonds but you got no, it at Walmart is no right? yeah, yeah no salt yeah, added you can find it anywhere that's in many of the uh, neutral uh, natural food stores too they'll sell this brand too. And there is your acai bowl. Now you could put peanut butter. You don't have to put any nut butter. You can put other nut butter if you right. want. There's plenty of other types. Um, you can make this any way you want. I am telling you, this is delicious and it will keep you full until your next meal. There's lots so. of great proteins in that, lots of fiber in that, and that's what keeps people <laughs> satiated for the rest of the day. A you know, little protein every morning for breakfast, lots of fiber for breakfast, and you'll feel good till lunch, not looking for that mid-morning snack, yep. making poor choices. Exactly. So now Dan is going to show you his, what has now become his famous breakfast bowl, <laughs> okay? <laughs> and it has helped so many people. I'm going to say it's, it's changed the world, Dan. That's what I'm going to say. That's, that's how... That's how impactful this breakfast bowl has been but it really is amazing and um, I'm gonna let you add it sure in the meantime I'm gonna go check my phone because I'm gonna see if there's any questions or comments please put your questions in the chat and Dan will answer them um, he is great at talking and working at the same time and so all right I'll be back
what inspired me was to get away from all of the processed breakfast foods that are out there. And I just wanted to get something that would keep my belly feeling good all morning long with plenty of fiber and plenty of protein, very low in sugar. So this is what I did is I created this breakfast bowl. And I know that oats are a great part of everybody's healthy breakfast. So I just use whole grain rolled oats. I don't use any kind of steel cut oats because I don't like to cook my breakfast bowl. I just take about a half a cup of oats, just raw, just like that, and put it in my bowl. Then, like Pamela was just showing you, I use all of our nuts and seeds that we have in our containers. So I'll take, I use a tablespoon, a tablespoon of flax. Ooh, this stuff is so good for us. Everybody should be eating flaxseed every single day. Not only is it great in fiber, but it also has those lignans that are like hormone, um, phytohormones, like phytoestrogens that you hear about in soy. And it protects us all against, you know, for the women against breast cancer. It's been shown over and over again. And for men against the number one cancer, prostate cancer. So flaxseed, I put a tablespoon of flaxseed, all of the uh, omega-3 uh, omega oils that are in there too are so good for us. I also use a, ta a tablespoon of chia seed. Again, fiber, protein, lots of great nutrients. I use the hemp hearts, a tablespoon of hemp hearts. I use a tablespoon of the uh, pepito or the uh, pumpkin seeds, raw, unsalted. I like them just like this. Another tablespoon right in there. Loads of fiber, loads of protein, lots of great nutrients. I also use a half a tablespoon of just uh, ground up or um, shaved uh, coconut uh, shavings. And I just like that because it gives me a little bit of extra flavor. And again, the medicinal part of the fiber that coconut gives us, um, so good for us. I use the cacao nibs, about another half a tablespoon of cacao nibs. I, I mean, they're expensive. I don't like to use too much of them, but I want to give a little flavor. I want to get their antioxidant activity, so I put them in. And I also use some walnuts. Walnuts, again, probably the best nut that you could have every single day, again, because of its uh, omega-3s that are in there, but also the fiber, the protein, and the type of fats that are in walnuts. Not only are they unsaturated, but there's a lot of mono saturated fats in walnuts too. So a great nut to have. And then I also add a nut butter. I like the almond butter, but you could also use a peanut butter. But again, read labels, make sure that the ingredients say peanuts and salt. And that's it. You can see the oil that's on top of this. All of your peanut butter that you buy in the store should have oil on the top. And it's pretty easy to mix it and blend it. When I mix it, I use our nice big butter knife so I can get some leverage. And I just put it in there and just mix it up like this. And once you mix all of this peanut oil back into the peanuts, uh, the nut butter into the peanut butter, then the trick is to keep it in the refrigerator and that oil will stay mixed into the nut butter and not start separating again. So you have to mix it every single time. So that's a little trick that I learned quite a while ago and it's helped us a lot. But I'm gonna use the almond butter. And again, I use just one tablespoon of almond butter, which is like 100 calories. Um, I, again, why almond butter? flavor. It might be that you just like the flavor better, but there's also some uh, science behind why this might be better than peanut butter, and that is that it has less saturated fat. It still gives you the same amount of protein, but the fat ratio of saturated versus unsaturated fats is better in almond than it is in peanut butter. And then any type of nut milk. You could use um, even a grain milk. I have almond milk this morning that I'm gonna share with you. And I always make sure I shake it up to make sure it's well blended. But almond milk, just make sure it always says unsweetened. It doesn't matter what brand. Um, they've taken all of the bad things out because people are aware. And many of the groups have complained to the companies to get the things like carrageenan out and they have done it for us. So I just put in, just so I cover it, 
and once it's covered, it's ready to go. You can see, even through my explanation of how I put this bowl together, that it doesn't take that long. And in the morning, I always say it takes me literally about two minutes to put it together and about four minutes to eat. For people that say they don't have time to uh, make a breakfast bowl, I'll just add a little bit more of my almond milk, uh, they, they don't have time to make a breakfast bowl and eat breakfast, that's not true. This is ready to go just the way it is. And doesn't that look delicious? It's kind of it's kind of like my morning ritual that I do every single day to keep my belly satisfied and keep me uh, satisfied, but also it jump starts my system, my metabolism, gives me the fuel for my morning, and many times even right through lunch. So that's my breakfast bowl along with Pamela's acai bowl, both of them very hearty, very nutritious. Lots of antioxidants, lots of protein and healthy fats. That's what we're looking for. The other thing that Dan, that you do, I don't think that you mentioned this, is many times if he knows that he isn't even gonna have time to prepare it, even though it is so fast to prepare right. and to eat, um, but he prepares it ahead of time. Or in the a night before even. Well, that's what I mean, in, yeah. a, in a mason jar. Right. So he just puts all those things in a mason jar and puts it in the refrigerator and grab and go. If I have an early meeting or an early surgery, exactly. I go right from the gym to the hospital, I have it in a mason jar so I don't miss my bring breakfast. Bring it to the gym, bring it to the hospital, yep. and you have a break, he eats it. So, you know, it's just taking those excuses out, you know, that you don't have time, okay? Right. We have shown you some great ways that you can have a nutritionally dense breakfast even if you have very little time. Every single morning. And you know what? If I was really crunched for time and I didn't even, and I didn't prepare the night before, I always have sweet potatoes mm. that are ready to go in my refrigerator. Mm. I've already roasted them, baked them, microwaved them, whatever. They're already ready to go. And you can eat a cold sweet potato. Delicious. And you can warm it up wherever you, you know, whenever you get to your destination. You don't even have to stuff it and put anything in it or top it. But that sweet potato is, um, I mean, it, it, it's like one of the staple, world staple foods, right? Right. It, you know, potatoes are the hot, you know, number one source of vitamin C. Everyone thinks that vitamin C comes mm. from oranges, and it does. Even though there's more vitamin C in an orange, if you think of all the potatoes that are eaten in the world, it is the number one mm. source. But eat it with the skin. Make sure that you mm, just, just don't eat the innards. Yeah. All the nutrients and all and much of the fiber is on the skin. So wash them well, prick them, and every time you put the oven on, throw in four to six sweet potatoes so you always have them. They stay very well in the refrigerator. That's right. That's right. They're great. You can cut them up in a salad. You can. They're so versatile. You can. Um, we'll if we have them, we'll we'll cut them up, throw them in the air fryer, mm. and and have like air fried potatoes as a side dish for di for dinner or lunch. Such a so many ways to repurpose oh, them, yes. yeah. and they're so good for you with lots of antioxidants. You can tell by the color of them. They're in the orange family, so they provide a lot of carotenoids, which we really need for our bodies, uh, for our sight, for our joints, for our inflammation. Mm -hmm. Very good for us. Okay, uh, I don't think there aren't really any questions. So um, hopefully you guys enjoy this. Let me just check one more time. Um, yeah, the sweet potato, that's mm. a game changer. Yeah, how do you feel about soy milk, Dan? Yeah, soy milk is very good. I have soy milk very often. That's my go-to mm -hmm. breakfast milk. Um, I just opened up almond milk this morning with Pamela, but you can use any nut milk. I'm a big fan of oat milk too. Mm. So people think that, as I mentioned with the flax, with the lignans that are very phytoestrogenic, along with soy and all of the soy products, whether it's a milk, or it's uh, fermented soy that we buy or, or even eat at Asian restaurants often. Soy, actually, the phytoestrogens bind to a different receptor. And it's been known now for about 12 to 15 years that the people that eat the most soy actually have less risk for cancer, less breast cancer, less prostate cancer for men, 
And that goes along with the flax seeds too. So soy, a very healthy protein source, a complete protein source, uh, meaning that it has all of the essential amino acids and it has those protective phytoestrogens different than our estrogens, so they bind and actually uh, to a different mm -hmm. estrogen receptor and even block the ones that we want blocked, the estrogen receptors that we want blocked. So soy is a great product. Don't be afraid to eat soy. Don't be afraid to eat flax. The, the thing I do say is that, and Deanne agrees, is that if there's something that you are afraid of eating, like you're just like, you know what, even though Dr. Dan just said that, or even though I've read it's okay, or you know what, I read it isn't okay, just don't eat it. Yeah. There's, there's so many different non-dairy right. milks. There's That's so right. many different, you know, plant-based milks. Like I said, there's, the oat milk is delicious. Yeah. Uh, the almond milk is delicious. They've really gotten it down mm -hmm. to make such delicious products than they were even five years ago. That's right, yeah. So, you know, you have so many choices now. Just um, always read ingredients and keep the, you know, enriched foods out of your life. Right. Keep the hydrogenated fats out mm -hmm. of your life and keep the sugar out of your life. Oh, yeah. So if it has anything that says enriched, hydrogenated, or any added mm -hmm. sugar of any kind, even the... You know, artificial sweeteners mm -hmm. of any kind, that's a great signal that it's a processed food yep. and leave it out. Yep, Terry's saying, um, and Terry, oh my gosh, Terry, thanks for being on. Love you. It's early in the morning where uh, you are, that's Terry. Right. And um, she's mentioning that flax milk, flax milk is great yes. too. Yes, it is. Uh, oat milk is Ann's favorite. Yes, absolutely. Yes. So we have some really great choices. and uh, Just look at the sugar, make sure there's no sugar. That's, that's right, because some of them are sweetened. I don't know I why know. they're sweetening them. They're so sweet on their own. We don't need that added sugar. Right. Um, so, you know, be careful um, of that. All right, you guys, we'll be back next week. And ask us questions in the group. We're here for you, as always. And have a great, great day. Enjoy your breakfast. Okay. Bye, you guys.